Hello, my name is Kevin from Moonlight Mantids, um, and uh, today we're going to talk about uh, springtails and how to culture them and why we're culturing them. Um, it's uh, it, we're going to use them for grass mantids, um, plain and simple. We have some North American species that you're probably familiar with or don't really know about. Um, they are it's the uh, Brunner borealis, which is the Brunner mantis. It should be called the North American Grass Mantis. It's called Brunner because it's after the guy that discovered them or whatever. And uh, there's other species of grass mantis, like the Indian Grass Mantis, which is the Shizo bicornis, which one of my favorite Latin names, Shizo. Um, and uh, anyway, so uh, w the thing with these is they start out really, really tiny. And sometimes springtails are a little bit better of an option than the uh, Melanogaster. Which, because they're about the same size, I mean, they start really, really, really small, and they're very delicate, and they're hard to set up, so I'm going to show you how to set them up a little bit, because I have some that just hatched right here, that uh, I got from Joe Murphy, um, this, I think it was this spring, anyway, thanks Joe for, uh, for uh, sending me these, and um, I got them right here, I'm going to show you guys how to set them up, uh, the uh, cool thing about uh, the Brunner mantis that I'm going to go ahead and mention right now, other than it's a U.S. species, is that it's parthenogenic, which means the cool thing about them is you raise them up, and then you have, uh, once they're adults, they're all female. You don't need to breed these things. That's what parthenogenic means. They just reproduce on their own. They kind of clone themselves. So um, once you get one to adulthood, they'll just lay a whole bunch of ooth for the duration after reaching adulthood, which is really, really cool. Um, not the Shizomycornis, those you actually have to breed. Um, but uh, the thing with these, they start out really, really small, both of these species do, and uh, it can, they're just really delicate. It's really hard to get them to that point. Um, so one trick that I've learned, other than trying to feed Melanogaster, you know, um, just sparingly, or you're, you're gonna you're gonna overcrowd them, and it's gonna it's it, it's sometimes easier just to start them off with a few springtails, um, which uh, they can catch and eat pretty voraciously, um, just for the just until they reach their first shed. So I'm going to teach you how to culture these uh, real quick. I'm going to show you what to do, and then uh, I'm going to show you the youth and the uh, little um, runners that I have myself. Um, and then uh, I'll probably finish up by showing you guys something cool. Um, here, hold on a second. Let me grab the camera. Mm -hmm. All right, here you go. I can see. All right, so first thing you're going to need, you're going to need some of these 8-ounce uh, cups. Uh, they don't have to be 8-ounce. They can be smaller. They can be any kind of deli cup. So long as they seal uh, properly, which means that you don't want any holes or anything like that in them because springtails can get out, and once they get out, um, they're pretty much everywhere. They're not a nuisance. Springtails eat mold, um, which I'm going to show you what they eat and how to culture them and all that. And uh, one thing you're going to need, and there's two different methods of doing this that I'm going to show you just real fast. So you get your cup. And we're going to pretend set one of these up. And you have here um, charcoal chips, which uh, I'm just going to take a scoop of these out. A little five ounce cup. And you're going to fill it about halfway with the charcoal chips real quick. Just show you, just like that. Next thing you're going to need, real simple, some distilled water. Even though uh, I don't think everyone uses distilled water. Um, we're going to go ahead and just add some nice distilled water. About a quarter of the way, you know, not, uh, not all the way. Some people rinse this out. I just, I'm just going to add some here just to show you quick. And then I have a pre-prepared pink springtail. There's also uh, culture. There's uh, silver springtails, which um, I think you could find outside, honestly. You could even start culturing those. But the pinks are a little bit bigger, and there's another species that I'm going to show you. Uh, I can't remember the name right now, but um, I, I, the, the pink ones are the ones I use for the Brunners um, as feed. The really cool thing about this is they're waterproof. So they kind of just sit in the culture. And uh, they hop all around on, in this, and then um, what you do once you set this up with uh, halfway of this 8-ounce cup, with the uh, which you can order from TSK, and you can get the uh, charcoal chips from basically any um, like large gardening center or hardware store. Um, and uh, so what you do is you got your springtails in here, and all you're going to do is transfer some of the springtails into this other culture, just like that. So you don't want to fill it with too much water right away. Then, uh, um, because it's going to overflow, then you got about halfway with water. Remember, I said about a quarter of the way with water distilled, hopefully. And you're just going to close that up just like that. And uh, then you're going to go back to your your um, your first culture, fill it back up with some water, and then go ahead and put the lid on it, and that's it. Um, so there you go. You just made a pink springtail culture. Um, what do they eat? You're going to use brewer's yeast. I'm not going to show you any specific brewer's yeast. Don't feed them yeast, just brewer's yeast. You find it, it's in this powder form, it's really great. You open up your culture, which I just 
closed. Take just a little bit and you're going to sprinkle it in there and that's literally what the springtails are going to eat. Um, in about a few, you're going to feed them, uh, probably make sure that they have everything they need. Um, uh, probably once or twice a week you're going to just put a little bit of uh, brewer's yeast in there more and more as you get, um, as they start to propagate. And then uh, you have your springtail culture all set up. Uh, another way to do this is you can get the 8 ounce cup, put a little bit of eco earth in it. And literally, I'm not joking, you don't have to have the chips, but I'm going to tell you the main difference if you don't. See, you just got your culture here. You're going to dump some of the water in here, which is really awesome because they float. You're going to dump some in there. You got your springtails in here. Same thing, brewer's yeast. Close it. You can throw in some organic matter or whatever. They like to decompose stuff. Um, springtails, you should know, are used to clean vivariums. They're like... Uh, um, they help to uh, uh, to, uh, just, uh, like decompose the leftover uh, plant matter and uh, even animal matter. If you have something like uh, assassin bugs and a viv, they can uh, break down stuff. And they're really useful, just like isopods, um, which uh, are also you can also use as another feeder. Feeder, but uh, they're really hard to reproduce. Anyway, you put your brewer's yeast in here. You can also just use eco earth. That's literally all you need. All you need really is a sealed container somewhat of a medium. The main difference, why do people not just use this and this like easier? Well, like I just showed you, they kind of float because they're waterproof and uh, when you want to transfer them for feeding, you can literally just dump in some of the springtails or what some people do is they open them, open them up and if you just like really gently blow a little bit like this, they just kind of go everywhere. And you can just uh, add some into whatever you have your Brunner Mantids in. By the way, Brunner Mantids are really voracious and love to eat each other. Which uh, isn't really a great way to start them because you want as many as you can get. Because they don't hatch really fast. Um, now I'm going to show you really quickly my Ooth and my new Brunner Mantids. Mantids. See right there? You got a couple there. That's the Ooth. That's literally how big the Ooth are. The adults are fairly large. Uh, I'm going to... Go ahead and close this uh, before they escape. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Boring. Okay. So, my other ones. There's a few in there. Um, something you should know about these Ooth. Um, yes, you put them upside down. Yes, I got a little bit of moss in there. And I just lightly miss the Ooth every couple of days. Uh, not the Ooth directly, just the uh, the moss here in the bottom. Something to know about these Ooth, when they, when these mantids, when they start to hatch, these nice little brunners, is that... They, uh, not only will they eat each other, they hatch randomly. They don't hatch all at once. They hatch in the course of a week to two weeks. So you might get two or three to hatch a day, up to 20 or 30, possibly, usually not even that much. And, uh, they, they, they hatch randomly. So they are not all going to come out at the same time. And, um, so you're going to probably get a couple of them and say, oh, that's it? Damn, that, that's kind of, that's kind of lame. And then they just, end, you end up throwing them outside. Uh, these have actually been eating a little bit. I've been throwing springtails in there. Um, but I'm going to show you real quick um, what I typically put them in because they like to eat each other. I see the, the nice tooth and the nice brunners. Really cool. They get really nice bright green, really big. Um, beautiful U.S. species. Um, so I have these, uh, I call them nymph cups. And uh, there's just a five ounce cup. I put all my nymphs in them at first. Get a little bit of paper towel. And uh, you put them in there. And uh, make sure, instead of having like this larger grate that I use for some of the other species, because these are so tiny, they need a little bit of help. They have this fine mesh material. Uh, it's called tool. Just cut it up and uh, into little squares, and that kind of helps for your lid. Um, let me just grab one of these here. Come on. There you go. And you know what? It's not, it's not going to just go in there. Um, let me hold this here. Come on, buddy. There you go. All right, hopefully that wasn't too graphic. I just knocked them off into there. Remember, uh, make sure you use a pretty good atomizer uh, spray water bottle. Don't spray them directly because you can drown them. He's got a little bit of water here. Um, you could take some of your springtails out. Like I said earlier, if you have a really full uh, container, you can just kind of, um, when they're, when they're a, a little bigger, or even if you wanted to in this container here, I could just dump the water. But if you just blow on it a little bit, the springtails, just just fly by the hundreds right into the container and then he's got plenty to eat there and then uh, 
you just put your nice little, put your tool on there, and then uh, your lid. They need a really good shedding surface, and because they're a really small and delicate mantis, you want to give them a little bit extra. The tool is good for that, flower species, other stuff that you might want to use the tool on. But now this one's completely set up. Uh, make sure you throw springtails in there, make sure he has some to eat, a uh, pretty decent amount. You don't want to overcrowd them with just a ton of them. And then, um, you know, uh, that'll stress them out, which is really bad. Um, after you get through their first shed, which should take place in about nine days, like most mantids, then you can start feeding them the melanogaster. It's just so hard to get these guys to go from, uh, you know, an L1 to an L2. But once you get to about the L3 stage, then uh, you know you're safe and uh, your mantids are definitely going to make it. Um, so I just showed you how to culture them. Uh, I showed you why. Um, let me just go over that one more time, um, in case I wasn't clear. Uh, you got your water and charcoal chips, distilled water, charcoal chips, and then of course they eat the brewery yeast, and that's all you need. Sealed container, no holes. Um, check it about once or twice a week. Um, the reason you want this, instead of with the Eco Earth, is because when it comes to transferring these into a vivarium, or even as a feeder, you could just dump the liquid in and replace some of the liquid. Whereas this one, you're pretty much SOL, you know what I mean? And if the more of this you transfer into your containers, it's going to make a mess. Um, they do perfectly well in this, and um, it's really, it's up to you. But if you can get the chips and the water, they're waterproof. It just works for transferring them into vivs and into the con containers where you're going to be feeding from. And I hope that helps with people that are having a lot of trouble, like I did, um, with the uh, the Brunner Mantids. And um, let me just put this back, one second. Here we go. All right, can you see me? Um, yeah, uh, I, I hope that helps a lot. I usually don't show how to like culture things um, besides Mantids, but these are a great feeder for Mantids. They're really easy to do. Everyone should have a backup pink, uh, pink springtail culture. Another reason why is, you see behind me here, we have a vivarium. And, uh, I like to put a lot of my mantis, like my orchids, um, my bigger stuff, my real pretty stuff, into the vivs for pictures. Um, sometimes I keep a few in there. It's, I don't really use the vivs for anything. Um, I just like to put adults in there once in a while. And uh, sometimes with a lot of the touchier species, they seem to get ill. Um, or you get a female that just, you know, doesn't want to relax, doesn't want to eat. The best thing to do is sometimes just to pop them in a viv. And like I had one that uh, was egg bound, it just didn't want to lay eggs. Threw in a vivarium, miss the vivarium every other day like I do for my uh, bromeliads or ferns or whatever's in there. And uh, then they, they relax and they just start laying a bunch of eggs and you just take the eggs out and incubate them. Um, like you can watch my youth video. And uh, that's pretty much all you do. Uh, I hope this video helped. Uh, let me show you something really, really cool. And then I'll let you guys go just because I like to kind of mix it up. Uh, right here. I'll show you. Uh oh. I hope you can see that. There you go. See that? That is a snail. A really big freaking snail. This is a Helix uh, Aspersa, which is actually the escargot. This is actually the snail they eat. I like to keep a lot of things, as you guys have seen, and um, just, uh, you just keep me distracted. And uh, mostly I work with my mantids. Mostly, I mean, pretty much only. But once in a while I'll come across something cool like this, this ginormous snail. And I just like to show it off. Um, pretty cool guys. Uh, if you can find them outside, they're kind of cool to keep and culture, like the springtails, mantids, and everything else we like to culture. Uh, another thing I have here, which are great for decom decomposition, like I mentioned with the uh, springtails, is my millipedes, which I, that came from Florida. I think they're Florida or you know south eastern U.S. species. They're really pretty. These, this is my favorite, the uh, Florida smoky oak mantis. Or, uh, millipede oh my gosh um, and I just like to show you some different stuff when I can um, also make sure when you have the uh, now that I think of it when you have the uh, the brunners which see they're so well behaved is make sure you have your fruit fly cultures uh, handy and ready to go uh, this is a fresh one and uh, uh, sometimes they can handle the uh, the fruit flies right away the melanogaster sometimes they can't and uh, you really just want to make sure that uh, you, you know, you're exploring all options. These are very delicate, but once you get started, parthenogenesis, really, really cool. No breeding involved. You just got to get them to that state, and then uh, you're all set. Uh, make sure you use tool and uh, finer meshes if you can, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, thanks again, Joe Murphy, for the uh, these two ooth. Well, that was my Brunner Mantis or Grass Mantis video. I hope you guys like it. Uh, I should have a lot more videos coming out soon. Uh, I pre-recorded some that I haven't uploaded yet. Hopefully this one gets uploaded pretty soon. 
Um, and uh, like always, thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Um,